So this is Steve at Thousand Year Homes. Welcome aboard. So today I want to talk about the uh, safety of cutting out windows. Um, and of course, earlier videos I talk about different ways I cut them out. Angle grinder and the Sawzall. You see both of the devices are there. But uh, today I want to talk about the fact that the, um, the corrugation in the sidewalls is such that it flexes based on the damage and stresses it's in. And in this particular video, you'll see that um, I'm going through and I'm using an angle grinder. Now, I do have a safety officer outside with fire extinguisher and all that. I've covered that before. But you'll notice my angle grinder here gets physically pushed out of the cut. And that's because the forces on the walls are so much that it binds the, uh, the angle grinder. Now, it grabbed one of my blades and actually destroyed a blade while I was in it. So the safety shield, not having it on there, was a bit of a problem. You'll see I'm using a full face mask uh, because I did lose one uh, wheel doing this exact same method. Uh, in addition to cutting that out that way, um, I did use a Sawzall, but on the right side of that window, it is completely cut out, but it is pinched so strongly that it, it broke my Sawzall blade. So I'm going in there, I'm pushing on it, checking it. Um, here you'll see how much it springs out, right, with the clamp. That's just a simple 21, uh, 20 by 20 inch window. So don't be alarmed by not hearing this audio. I repeat this segment later on, but I just wanted you to show how much it bends. That one inch bend is a real bite. In addition, I had to grind the edges because they are razor, razor sharp. So I used a flapper disc for that. So there is a little bit of concern. So every window is completely reinforced as I went, or the whole wall would have been sprung out. Um, and uh, so as I went, I built. So in this case, it's a little bit of an optical illusion on this one because the backer boards are pushing things out. But look at this spring out. You know, that's for for real. When I drill the outside holes and I run a screw in, every screw draws that corrugation in. Hey, it's Steve at Thousand Year Home. So uh, welcome to my channel. So I'm building out a Caesar. I know that lasts a thousand years. So there's storms bro rolling through. I don't know if you can hear the rain on the uh, Connex, but it broke the heat. So I went from 107 down to 96. It's 96 degrees right now. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm building it in place uh, with a mock-up. So my stained glass windows will be like that. And then I'll have... Uh, wood blocks in here that'll that'll hold it out all the way around so I'll box that in and this will be a bookshelf so uh, I think that that will look pretty nice this is the same technique that I used on the bathroom windows which I'll show you so rather than a lot of measuring measuring I uh, I build a mock-up in place and uh, Oh, I'm transferring the, the numbers onto here, and then when I'm done, I'll transfer them onto the boards that I'll need. Then uh, that's exactly the way that I built this. So that old-fashioned span. People used to have spanning gauges, and uh, so rather than uh, inches and quarter inches and little doodads, which I still use my tape measure, but uh, I do fit it, dry fit it all together. But everything in here, I, I built that that same way. Um, and I'm building it all out of cedar, so I know that it'll last a thousand years. And uh, the whole point, uh, this will be a bookcase, right? But the purpose of the bookcase is to uh, transfer weight, and there'll be a bottom piece, a sill plate, if you will, uh, in a bookshelf up through here. And then on the top, I'll have a 4x4 four four span. That'll go up to the roof, and every four feet, a little less than four feet, I'll have a four by four that'll go, and then I can hang my ceiling fan, I can hang my lights, I can put in my insulation, uh, and put in uh, you know uh, chicken wire if I need to to hold the insulation up, and then on the very top it'll be poured with perlite. So this thing will be well insulated, and. Uh, I believe if I need to support it during uh, the concrete, I'll just come in here and support the 4x4s that I'll end up putting in place. So everything will end up, as are 6x6. I'm using post in, in, in some places, which uh, will be, and everything will be treated with linseed oil. I'm not going to varnish anything, but uh, it'll look really nice. And uh, again, the linseed will let it last a long time. 
Uh, but this is my methodology. It's I just measure it up in place, transfer it on the walls, and transfer it to paper, and, and then cut the cut the wood according to size. I should be done with this tomorrow. All right, so I'm close to having this one ready to install. All I need to do is uh, put the uh, foil behind it and a spacer board. And then I'll run trim on the inside and I'll put the stained glass window in it. And then I'll trim the stained glass window in. And then I can run this roof beam. And this is a real milestone. It, it doesn't feel like it should be, but it's a real milestone in that uh, I'll be able to uh, start running electric when that's done and get this end of the building done. So I got all the supplies cut and ready, the logs and this bookcase. So in addition to that one, uh, <clears throat> so I, uh, I measured once and cut two is what I did. I used it as a template. So you can see that I got that one roughed in, right? All the top and bottom put in. I always hang something from the clamps, otherwise I end up walking into them when it gets dusk. I can't see that black clamp, but you can see then when I uh, take and I screw the, uh, the uh, drill holes from the outside and screw in there, I'll shore up that container and then uh, the container will be drawn tight. Watch this, I'll go ahead and loosen this. So you can see how much the, uh, this wooden support uh, straightens out the container, right? I can't, I can't possibly pull that in with my hand, but it took a one inch bend out of it there. So <clears throat> that's why every, every time I cut out a window, I punched holes through the other side and I fastened it with insulation in and then I wrap it and then it pulls it all straight otherwise the uh, the whole thing would be warped and then i put a level on it and make sure it's all straight so <clears throat> that's why this one i'll have to shoot a little and that one too once the uh, backer boards are what's uh, making it stick out but i knew that would happen uh, but i think it's well worth it oh man it'll be so pretty something in there right so this one the same way if i go ahead and remove the uh, the clamp you can watch and see, see how, how much it, uh, the bend in the metal comes back. So, anyway, I end up drilling holes and binding it all together. I'll bind a four by four across there, all the way through the roof, back down. And then I'll have four foot sections in each area that I could put drywall in. Boom, 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 and electrical. So uh, that's the game plan. And uh, I'm real close to having this done. Somebody asked me today if I was living in here because I have had videos with me inside of the containers, uh, but I, you know, I can't keep moving my bedroom. So now I'm, I'm all moved into that little camper for the moment, uh, but I'm hoping within the next two weeks, uh, 30 days to be in this one. So we'll see how close I get to that.